All right, so the next piece is from the timeline therapy that was developed by a guy named Tad James, who was my neurolinguistics and hypnosis and timeline teacher. And this thing, this changed my life and I'm not gonna explain it. I have explained it other places. I'm just gonna teach you how to do it. Please do this. If you, if this was helpful, just stick around. I'll, I'll give you more information, but I just want to help you get out of anxiety now. Okay. So for this technique, you need to imagine a timeline. I'll do it in red here. See if that works. All right. Out here is the future. We'll make an F for the future. There will be a future people. And then we have P for past. We're going to make right now on this timeline here, all right? So you're looking at the timeline sideways. Essentially, you're gonna turn and go out in your mind above your timeline. And what you're gonna do, I guess I'll use green for this, see if this works. You're gonna get up above your timeline, way up, and you're gonna go out and as far out into the future as you can imagine, that is about 15 minutes, after the successful completion of the thing you are anxious about. And remember, anxiety is thinking about what you do not want to have happen and your body interpreting it as reality because inside your body, it doesn't know the difference between what is real and what's imagined. And again, I go into this kind of information in another video. I just want to kind of give you the bare bones so you can use this, get out of fear, get out of panic, so you can be resourceful in dealing with what is actually happening in your world, okay? So um, you need to float up in your mind above your timeline and then turn and look back. So you're gonna go up above your timeline and you're gonna turn and you're gonna look down Let's say the event that you were anxious about is here. You're going to look down 15 minutes after that event has successfully completed. So for example, in the case of our current state, it is April 3rd, 2020. At this moment, uh, the entire United States and most of the world have been basically quarantine. We're, we're self-isolating. We're social distancing. Everybody's trying to get through this COVID-19 thing. Well, we will get through it. So we need to get up above and look back at a time when things return to normal or things have returned to normal, right? So that may be maybe 18 months from now, right? But whatever the case, whatever the timeline you can imagine when everything's either back to normal or even better than back to normal, when we've learned our lessons, when we've gotten our stuff together, when the economy has recovered, I don't know when that is, but you have to start imagining that because if you don't, you're not going to be as resourceful as if, if, if you're imagining the worst case scenario. Now we have to we have to be careful not to just be blindly optimistic. We have to be realistic as well. But anxiety is the gift of being able to go out into the future and seeing what you don't want to have happen and then taking action today to prevent that. So in the past, you know, we would go ahead in our minds and imagine winter and being cold. So we would make clothing or imagine winter less food so we would store food. That's the proper use of anxiety, okay? So anxiety is not designed to make you so screwed up that you can't do anything to save yourself, right? The whole idea of anxiety is the, it's literally the gift that we have as humans and that we can anticipate the future. Squirrels don't know why they're hiding nuts for the winter, right? <laughs> we know that there's winter coming and we better prepare. We want to get up above our timeline, go out into the future 15 minutes after the successful completion of whatever it is you were, you thought you were anxious about. And you need to then turn and look back down your timeline. I can't really do this very well in this camera situation, but you want to look back down the timeline and see it resolved. All right. And no matter how bad it is, you can always imagine it resolving. 
even with the death of a loved one, we can imagine that they're not in pain anymore. We can imagine that they're in a better place. Whatever it takes for you to shift, you've got to imagine it. Now, you're, you've floated up above your timeline, you've turned and you've looked back, and now you're, essentially, you're up above your life, turning and looking back and seeing everything working out in a positive way. Right now you have the choice. Anxiety gives us the choice. We can think of the worst case scenario, which is sometimes very useful, or we can also then think of how we want it to be. Now, your body does not know the difference between what is real and what is imagined. So if you imagine things that put your body on negative crisis alert, then your body will create those hormones, the cortisol, the adrenaline, all those things that fight or flight get you out of trouble, but you can't run anywhere, right? You can't fight this, right? So by shifting what you're holding in your mind, you affect your body chemistry, okay? So, and again, through this whole process, you're breathing, circular breathing up the backs of your legs, over the top of your head, swirl in front of your forehead, and then release down the front of your body. You're grounding and you're rolling your eyes, right? Now, float up above your timeline, go out 15 minutes into the future after the successful completion of this event, turn and look back and see it all resolve. In 2008, during that financial crisis, I lost everything. I ended up being homeless, right? And looking back at that, it took a little while for that to resolve. So make sure like you go out far enough into the future. It may be a year, it may be two years, it may be 10 years. The other day when I had a panic attack beginning to, to kind of want to come in, I went out 10 years into the future and I turned and looked back and I saw that I just, and, and this is where you have to be a creative. You have to be willing to imagine something good. And I imagined that this was the motivation that got me into seriously growing my own food, really taking care of my health. Uh, I turned and looked back 10 years from now and saw that, wow, during this crisis is when all of the things that I've been building in my life came together in a way that helped the most people, right? And that's partly why I'm doing this video is like, I went ahead 10 years and turned and looked back and saw I needed to share this with people and to practice it myself over and over and over again and then to remind myself and to remind you and to remind my children and to remind my family to do this over and over and over again until it becomes a powerful mental, emotional, spiritual, physical habit, okay? So you're looking back and you're seeing as you look back, you're seeing all the events that have to happen so that it actually does work out better than you could possibly imagine, all right? And uh, I was gonna save that for the last, but let's see. So that's the other piece that I'm just gonna bring in right now. Uh, so this was, uh, we have the circular breathing, we have the grounding, we have the eye roll, that's three. This is number four. So this is number four. Number five, I call witty. Why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? Okay, why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? This works because it's literally the auditory version of this visual exercise. So in the visual, you're going out and you're turning and looking back and seeing everything work out better than you could possibly imagine, right? But why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? Works in and of itself because you are asking a why question and your unconscious mind is pre-programmed to answer why questions. So you might as well use it. You can ask, why does this always happen to me? Or why is this bad thing happening? Which is a question that leads to negative answers, really. But if you ask positive, powerful questions, hey, give me some light here, camera. Uh, if you ask some powerful, positive questions, your unconscious mind has to automatically, like a computer, 
come up with answers, come up with evidence to the truth of that statement. So why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? Visually, here it is, and then auditorily, you want to start chanting it, right? So I'm going to breathe. Swirl, release, ground, roll my eyes, go out into the future, turn and look back, and see that this is actually one of the greatest opportunities, not only for my lifetime, but for your lifetime, and for the lifetime of the human race, and a sustainable future for our children and grandchildren, and on and on. You just have to somehow go, okay, why is this good, right? Why is this good? Why does this work out better than I can possibly imagine? And the more emotion you put behind it, the better it works as well. And I chant it. I use it. This is the one thing I use all day, every day, regardless. I do it while I'm breathing. I'll count to 20 and breathe, do 20 breaths. And with every breath go, one, why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? Two, why does it work out better than I can possibly imagine? So I use it as a mantra. I chant it. Uh, I write it out. There have been times when I've sat down with a piece of paper and written out a hundred. Why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? Why does it work out better than I could possibly imagine? And those things actually work. That will work because we need you to be able to function. We need you to be able to be resourceful. You need you to be able to be resourceful. I need you to be able to be resourceful and to be focusing on health, focusing on well-being. So uh, the furnace is about to kick on again, so I'm going to pause here and then I'll, I'll bring you back and add a couple of more things. There are two more things that I'd like to share with you. So come back soon or don't go anywhere or whatever. Here goes the furnace and I'll talk to you in the next one. Boom.